I was 20 years old when I first felt as though I didn't dress very well. Previous to that, I had just enjoyed buying clothes for the excitement of having something new. At around 20, I got this urge to think more about my style. I wanted to feel authentic and confident in my outfits. I already knew that I felt a lot of joy from clothes, but I felt directionless with style and like I had no real idea what I was doing. So my answer to my style problem was to shop. I thought better style was waiting for me just around the corner from my next purchase. I was searching for the answer, but I was getting nowhere. I wanted to feel empowered by my fashion choices, but how was I going to do that? Something that I've always known about myself and fashion is that I dress to my mood. So that is how I originally described my style back in 2012. It wasn't a very clear description of personal style, but that is all the knowledge that I had about personal style at the time. So today we're going to explore my style evolution from my early 20s to my now early 30s. We're going to talk about how I went from knowing absolutely nothing about personal style to now feeling empowered by all of my fashion choices and absolutely loving my wardrobe. Let me just get a bit more comfortable and at the end of the video I'm going to be sharing the main thing that I learned throughout my entire style journey and most importantly one actionable step that you guys can take to learn more about your own personal style as well. So let's start back in 2012. I had moved my very young self over to London for a three-month trip that turned into six years. So from early 2012 to late 2017 I lived in London majority of the time so let's take a look at my style journey in London. Okay, so let's just recap on these photos prior to moving to London. Had no real direction with style and what I was wearing. Didn't really think about it, didn't really care about it either. Here we are, 2012, 2013. This outfit on the left is actually like an old modeling shot. However, I styled that myself. So this was the typical kind of outfit that I was wearing at the time. I was living in East London. I was trying to find my alternative vibe and how I fit into East London. This is an old outfit that I love looking back on because it's just a bit of me. I love the black and white. I like looking back on that. I feel quite authentic. And this outfit up here is when I was over in London. This would have been a typical outfit for me to wear at the time. I think I was starting to think a bit more about style at this time as opposed to like these <laughs> these photos beforehand. These are a couple of photos that I grabbed from 2014 in London. I think this little summary of photos really shows I was putting in a little bit more effort. I think London for me was very influential in terms of style. Everywhere I looked in London, people seemed to dress really cool. I was working as a full-time model as well. So that I was around people in the fashion industry all the time. And I felt as though I kind of had to work on my style to fit in a bit more, I guess. I really remember trying quite hard. Put this outfit together and being really happy with the results. This was like one of the first times I've ever wore trainers with a dress and I remember feeling actually quite nervous to wear trainers with dresses because it was like kind of like this new trendy thing to do. I do remember the very first time I left the house with a dress and sneakers on and I felt uncomfortable the first time I left the house like that and it's funny because I wear that all the time now and it feels very much like me. I did often put myself out of my comfort zone to test different things. This coat that was the very first First coat I ever bought. This coat is also was the first really expensive piece of clothing I had ever bought in my life and this coat really opened up my eyes to quality pieces. This is something I typically wore 
at this age in London, 90s style. I really did like that kind of style, wearing the little mini dress over the t-shirt. Tights, I don't know why I'm wearing tights, but I'm wearing tights apparently. Okay, so 2015 in London. I think this year I was actually working a lot and I didn't post a lot to social media. I look at this little like denim number and I remember I rode my bicycle everywhere. I was very influenced with my style in London by that trendy laid back riding my bicycle around the town type look. 2016 in London was a bit of a turning point for me mentally. I think this was my yes year where I basically just said yes to everything. So photos on the left hand side are London and Europe and these three photos on the right hand side are a trip when I went back to Australia. This is like a typical what I would wear most days in London and I've always loved the classic turtlenecks especially with the short sleeves I think this is a really just classy beautiful look and I've, I, I wore that often. This outfit I wanted to include because I remember matching my bag to my shoes with the pop of red and thinking that that was really fun. I was really starting to experiment I think at this time with styling. So these three photos on the right are when I went on a trip to Australia. When I look at them I'm like I can just see how confused I was <laughs> and like what I was wearing. This one here I was remember experimenting with like bohemian looks. I think it's a really cute outfit. It's definitely not me. I remember the skirt being super short and obviously it was windy then so it was just like a very annoying outfit to wear. I look at it now and I think I remember not being comfortable. I don't know what this is. Then we have 2017 and this is when I think my style kind of started to take a bit of a turn. I'd now been living in London since 2013, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh good maths Emily. Five years. <laughs> I've been working in the modeling industry for five years. I'd had a bit of experience with styling and seeing how stylists did things. I was really having a, a really fun time with my style at this stage. That's what I remember looking back on these photos is, God, I had some fun then, you know? This outfit feel very me when I look at it now. I love this. Don't know what this giant hole in my knee is doing, but we'll just pretend we don't see that. And then this outfit top right hand corner is something that I want to talk about. Unfortunately, it's a bit, bit blurry, but I'll talk you through it anyway but I'm actually wearing fishnet stockings with sparkly socks on top of the fishnet stockings, <laughs> my Stan Smiths, and then this is a dress with a bomber jacket on top. This is the front of the outfit with the dress, there's a lot going on, right? I remember when I left the house in this outfit, going to see some friends, we were going to a museum and I remember being very nervous. Like I was like, am I really leaving the house in fishnet stockings with sparkly socks? Like, what am I doing? But like, I just felt like I had to. I've done that with quite a lot of outfits in the past. I'm like, not too sure about it, but I just get this vibe to be creative and I'm a bit nervous to leave the house, but I do it anyway. And I remember that day we explored the museum, we went for coffee, we walked the streets of London and I just felt really cool that day I felt really fun and like I tried to do something different with my style so I loved looking back on that outfit for sure a few more photos from 2017 these ones really showed me that I was trying a lot of different things and I wasn't scared again so like I'm wearing a red t-shirt with red jeans here wild and my top says in the mood for love wild So in 2017, I said goodbye to London and Alex and I moved back to my hometown, Melbourne, Australia. For anyone who's moved countries or even cities, you know how different your lifestyle can be when you move. And this was a huge lifestyle change for us. And with that came a further personal style journey. So let's take a look. All right, so 2018 was a continuation of a lot of experimentation again. Like this outfit here feels very much like me and my style now. The reason I like it, is because it's relaxed and undone. Even the fact that my t-shirt's just kind of like hanging off me a bit. I'm wearing a tailored trouser with a more relaxed oversized denim jacket, some trainers, floppy t-shirt. Just the whole vibe of the photo even for me is how I kind of typically describe my style nowadays as like being undone. I remember this outfit here, I was going out for lunch with Alex and I remember putting this together and having a lot of fun putting this together. So it's a double denim look, but with a little white crop top, the jeans are 
myself super slouchy and relaxed and I had like a headband over my head and some layered necklaces and then blue converse as well to kind of like tie in that blue theme. As you can see I experimented with different colors we've got the orange there, pink there, this here with the black turtleneck and black jeans that's definitely an outfit formula that I've seen a big pattern with over the years as well and then I've got another page of 2018 because I think this one shows a turning point in my style. This is when I started working in retail at a place called Country Road. This outfit down here is a full Country Road outfit so that kind of like describes the style of Country Road. Very relaxed, a lot of linens and cottons and beautiful like natural colors. These two images up here as you can see these are kind of fun and bright and more what I would wear typically in London and now I was transitioning. I'd been in Australia for a while and I felt as though my style had to change. I was kind of out of my partying modeling days. I was working in a really nice retail job. I had a real estate job on the side. The next year I also worked for a social media management company. So I was doing all these things. I definitely felt as though my life had changed and my style needed to change as well. 2019, <laughs> as you can see, I think there's like a big change here. I'd been in Australia for over a year. This was the year I started my YouTube channel as well. So I think uploading to YouTube was a massive turning point for me in my style again because I had eyes on me. I had people wanting to see if I could style well so I think I really wanted to make more of an effort. I'd also been working in retail for a while now. I was picking up a lot of classic clean minimal pieces from my retail job and that was kind of like the direction that my style was going in as well. So as you can see there were a lot more beiges, whites, mixes of beiges and blacks as well. A lot of like beautiful tailoring, tailored trousers, relaxed and I think more just like thought out minimal outfits. So the second page of 2019 I think this also shows me that I was developing a color palette which is so interesting. You'll see a video coming out soon where I talk about color palettes and my color palette and this page really reflects my current color palette right now and then 2020 once again more of that minimal style and a lot of earthy tones. I think I was really starting to create balance in my outfits too. Yeah, This dress this is when I decided that I really wanted a collection of beautiful whimsical just throw on dresses for summer because we also moved down to the beach at this point. I was like an hour and a half out of Melbourne so I just wanted like some nice dresses to throw on and that was my very first one one before I discovered Daughters of India. So in this moment where I thought I was really finally getting somewhere with my style, Alex and I made the move from Melbourne to Sydney. And once again, our lifestyles changed. So some of you may be thinking Melbourne and Sydney, both cities in Australia, like how is it really that different? But they are quite far away from each other in terms of distance and the seasons do change a lot. Sydney is more humid than Melbourne and where we live in Sydney has so many hills. So that is a huge lifestyle change. When I moved to Sydney, I became official a full-time YouTuber and content creator. So I was working from home Monday to Friday. So let's jump back to the computer and see where my style journey goes from here. Hi buddy, are you excited to move to Sydney? 2021 is when we moved to Sydney and this is when my style took another big turn. I want to talk about a couple of mistakes I made here. This is the year that I actually got a comment on my YouTube channel saying you don't wear enough colour. So if we look back in 2020 and 2019, I'm not wearing bright bright colours but you can see that I have a clear colour palette. And you can see that there are certain colors that I do like to wear. They're more neutral. There's a lot of blue. That's a color. Yeah, anyway, I actually took this really personally and this was quite a big mistake for me. So this is when I thought, wow, my wardrobe is too bland. I have to introduce more color into my wardrobe. That's when I started acquiring colorful pieces and I didn't really think about the colors that I was bringing into my current wardrobe. Other thing that I did was I also was obsessed with French girl style at this time, like obsessed. Jeanne Damas, if you know, you know, she's gorge. And a lot of her photos, they really create a good vibe. But I would look at these photos and I wouldn't think about my style. I wouldn't think about my lifestyle. I wouldn't think about anything. I would just look and go, I need those items because I need to look like her and I need to have this life. And that is really dangerous. We know that's so dangerous. And that's what fantasy self kind of does to you. That's when I started thinking I needed to add in all this French style 
style, which is on this side. Cardigans with prints, those little French bags. I had fun creating these outfits and I look at them and I think they're really cute. I also look at them and I think they're just not me. Like I don't feel like myself at all when I look at them. So yeah, that was a really confusing time for me. So at the end of 2021, I fell pregnant. This was also a really hard time for me. I had a really hard pregnancy and I just gave up with thinking about my personal style. Yeah, come in. Nate's calling out mummy. Hold on one second. Did you hurt your finger? Oh, Bubba, I'm sorry. It's my microphone. Let's go get an icy pole. Icy pole, icy pole. Love you, Bubba. Okay, where were we? Like I was saying, at the end of 2021, that's when I felt pregnant with that little child that you just saw. Yeah, it was a hard pregnancy and I kind of just I let go of my personal style at this point. I stopped caring about it. It wasn't my priority. 2022 was a massive change. You can see on the left-hand side, these are some pregnant photos. It was summertime. I was living in stretchy dresses. These are two wedding photos, secondhand dress, second hand dress, second hand dress, a lot of second hand stretchy dresses. And while I was at home, I was in tights and a t-shirt or just bike shorts and a t-shirt. I wasn't really thinking much about my personal style while I was pregnant. I was just trying to wear clothes that I felt comfortable in and that fit me. The end of the year was postpartum. This photo here, I spent most of my days like this at home with tights and a cardigan on with a newborn baby. I remember this outfit here, <laughs> one of the first times I left the house and actually tried to put an outfit together, but I remember feeling just like totally not okay with wearing a proper outfit out of the house. I had postpartum depression at the time and I wanted to feel like I was okay. And I remember trying to find that in my outfit that day. And um, it was nice for a moment, but obviously it wasn't the answer. This is another thing that I wore quite a lot postpartum and that I wear now. My daughter's vineyard dress collection just became part of my everyday style. So we're up to 2023 now. We're gonna head back to the other Emily to talk about where my style journey went from here. 2023, I was finally out of that newborn postpartum fog. My mental health had improved significantly and I was truly determined at this time to like really narrow down my personal style. I really wanted to understand my silhouette preferences and my color palette. So what I actually did in 2023 was a lot of self-reflection. In fact, I actually did this exact thing. I went over my style evolution, went over all of the photos that I could find from back in the day, and I had a look at the change that I'd made. What I was trying to see was like patterns in my style, noticing things that had changed and seeing what I continued to love throughout the whole journey to see if that would like spark any further understanding of my style. So for me as a mum, having practical outfits was something that was really important to me as well at this time and it still is. I wanted to still be able to wear like my classic jeans and a t-shirt look if that's what I wanted to reach for. But then I also wanted to have like a few go-to outfit formulas that I could reach for that were really practical, easy to move in, but looked really put together and stylish rather than reaching for my jeans and t-shirt every single day. So this is when I brought out my lazy styling tips video on YouTube. At the time, I was personally trying to figure out my lazy styling tips, things that I could wear quickly in a rush. And doing my style evolution, looking back on a lot of my photos reminded me of how much I love minimal style. And that minimal kind of aesthetic was something, a pattern that I'd seen for years, for the whole 10, 11, 12 years. So I knew minimal style was really practical for the time of life that I'm in right now. And I absolutely love minimal style outfits. They're always pinned all over my Pinterest boards. So I really wanted to just like focus more in on that. I didn't want minimal style to reflect my entire style because as you can see, like this dress is far from minimal, but it's one of my favorites and something that I love to wear often. So I didn't want minimal style to be the only part of my personal style, but I wanted it to be an aspect of my personal style. And I think that is something important to think about when you're thinking about your personal style is not just like honing in on one area, but actually like finding a few different areas to develop your own personal style. So creating clean and minimal outfits was a pattern that I saw over my style journey, but I never really noticed it until looking back over it. And I never leaned into it more. I never said, ah, this is actually part of my style identity. So when I look back on these photos of myself back in 2023 and did my first style 
male evolution. I looked at the photos and I asked myself, when did I feel most comfortable and most authentic in my outfits? So any outfits that popped up that reminded me of feeling comfortable and that I looked at and I thought, wow, that outfit really feels like me. I grouped all those photos together and it was often something where I was dressing quite minimally. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't do this like style evolution to go over and try to figure out my style identity. So with that being said, that is the exact exercise that I want you guys to try to do for yourself. I want to encourage you to go back as far as you can over a bunch of photos, maybe on your Instagram or Facebook or through your camera roll or whatever. Screenshot them, outfits that you like and outfits that you maybe don't like as well. Just screenshot a bunch and then watch them all in a row and watch your own style evolution and ask yourself that exact same question that I did. When did I feel the most comfortable and the most authentic in my outfits? Choose those outfits and see if there are any patterns that emerge for you to really figure out your true authentic style. I learned a lot from this style journey, but there was one main thing that really stood out to me. From wearing fishnet stockings and sparkly socks to simply pairing my trainers with a dress when it scared me. These outfits reminded me that I often push myself out of my comfort zone just to see how I felt. Some days I left the house in outfits that really did scare me. I made mistakes as well and I learned from them. I have no regrets with my style journey because every mistake was a lesson. Going forward, I will continue to experiment in a conscious way because it excites me and takes me new places on my style journey. If you are wondering how you can experiment with your style more without shopping, then you should watch this video next, where I talk about different ways to find inspiration without shopping. Ta-da! Thank you for watching. Please like.